Hello again. In this video we're going to be looking at control Travis height reduction. So we're going to move to our spreadsheet, the familiar spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet where we've done our bearing reductions and you'll recall um, that we had the height <coughs> or the distance measured from trig 1 to P1. This is it, is it here. I'm just going to reduce it one way to show you how to do this and then you'll need to move through the rest of the reductions in the example that you'll be doing um, so that you can actually uh, work out the mean. As you will be aware we're measuring the height in each direction both forward and back. So this will give us a delta height value which we will then have to mean to get the delta the delta height or the increase in height uh, between the two points, the mean, that's as determined going forwards and as determined going backwards, um, despite us actually applying the curvature and refraction correction here. Um, although we've applied the curvature and refraction correction, um, we will be applying it consistently and so it will cancel out by measuring or meaning the forward and back heights. So let's have a look at how we go through this calculation. Uh, first of all, uh, height of instrument minus height of target. So we have our height of instrument here, height of target here. I'm just using an Excel spreadsheet. So as you can see in there, if I just push the F2, um, you can see that it will be D13, um, which is the height of instrument, uh, minus D25, the height of target, and that gives us that value of 0 0.065. The next thing to do is to measure the slope distance times the cosine of the zenith distance. This gives the answers in metres. So uh, just here we have our slope distance down here in D33, and here we have our zenith distance, it's in 91 degrees, 42 minutes, 33. Now I've calculated that using Excel, I'll just push F2 here, which uh, gives you um, an indication of the, the formula that I've used. Now this formula may look quite complex and I've actually written it out here but it's in essence it is uh, quite simple um, the XL measures the bearings or needs the bearings to be in radians so what's happening in here is we have to convert 91 degrees 42 minutes and 33 seconds into radians so I've done this as an individual calculation so it's not one that if you copy you will need to put these numbers into the actual formula although the way I've used it here it does reference D33 which is the slope distance so the first thing we've got to do I'll start from the inner brackets is that's the 33 seconds divided by 3600 makes that in decimal degrees plus the 42 minutes divided by 60 adds that in decimal degrees plus the 91 that will give us a value of 91 degrees 42 minutes and 33 seconds in a decimal of a degree so and then we must divide that by 80 180 degrees if we divide that by 180 degrees and multiply it by pi that will put us give us radians pi radians is 180 degrees 2 pi radians is 360 degrees so decimal degrees divided by 180 and multiplied by pi we've got to do it all in brackets to keep everything together and then we take the cosine of that so that's the cosine of the zenith distance in radians and multiply that by the slope distance now you can do this on your calculators as well and you should get negative 94.168 but it is possible to get a slightly different answer in the millimetres here um, as different calculators can use different algorithms that will give you a slightly different answer. 
be aware that I'm working everything out in three decimal places. I like to keep my decimal places at that level right through to the end of the calculation as, and that's when I round things. Now <clears throat> the next thing is to apply the curvature and refraction correction and we have a formula for that which is 1 minus k in brackets times s squared where s is the distance in meters uh, in this case, this, this, the slope distance, um, 315.237, so that's the, the slope distance. And then that's all divided by 2R, where R is the radius of the Earth, or A radius of the Earth, and that's 6374000 metres. I might just put the metres in there. Um, put that in as a little m, just to, okay, so metres, and that's being calculated in here using this formula here, where you've got 1 minus 0 0.14 times d33, so it has referenced it, oh, if I just push f2 you'll see that it's referencing d33 there, to the power of 2 there, and then that's all divided by 637400 times 2, there's your 2R there, and that gives you a value of 0 0.672, 0 0.672 there. And then, of course, we add all these up to get negative 93.431, and that is the delta H as determined here, or the increase in height as determined in the forward direction. Now the expectation would that you work out all of these, one, these uh, reduce all of the heights or find the difference in height for all of the values that are in the calculation. And then once you have done that, you move forward and create another spreadsheet here which is the height traverse computation and misclose where we're going to work it out. So here we have the forward height here. Uh, that we worked out there previously, negative 93.431. And then I've shown all the other ones here. This is the uh, measuring that line in the reverse direction. And you will get a slight difference. It's, it's expected that you get a difference. And that dis difference mm, may be consistent over all of the ones here, but perhaps not. And so then we mean them now. Remember that the mean should be the result in the forward direction to keep our heights uh, consistent. So I've just put a little formula in there which is um, plus that minus, uh, so the plus the forward one minus the back one and then divide that by two and that will just uh, give you the mean there. So you can go through and do that and mean all of your ones there. Then what we do is, this is our uh, known height here of trig 1, and we go through and then apply them. It's just um, <coughs> just adding adding as we go through, till we come through to trig 2. And we bring in the heights forward, we get a, a height for trig 2 of 384.37. However, we know that the known height of the trig is 384.63, 384.63. So we find that we have a misclose. We can we know that we have to add 0 0.26. Just a little. I just might make these up into just into three decimal places, although they all seem to be working out to the zero. <clears throat> just just to, for consistency there. So 384, so that's our misclose, 0 0.26. Now we need to distribute the misclose here to get our final heights. And to do that I've distributed the misclose um, proportional to the distance. So what I've done here is I've just put the approximate distances in because we're only talking about very small amounts, so it, it won't make any difference 
um, <clears throat> to the final result by just having an approximate. So I've just approximated them to the nearest 100 metres in this case. Uh, if, if you can go better than that, go for it. And I've added them up 1,700, uh, 17,800 here. Now, to distribute them proportionately, what I've done here is, I'll just have a look at this formula here. So um, I've got the actual um, one F2, uh, which is, um, we're looking at I6, which is the distance here, uh, divided by the total distance, so 3,200 there, divided by the total distance, multiplied by the actual misclose here. And that's what we've got for the first one there. For the second one, uh, slightly different, because what we've done there is uh, we've also added the one above so we're accumulating them so for the first one there I just uh, calculated it straight out there and then for the second one it's the same calculation it's just uh, that over that times that but plus the the one above and so we've accumulated it down there so we get 0 0.260 here these are our corrections and that agrees there with the misclose so I must have got it pretty right and then we can now in position to calculate our final heights here we have our final heights here 287.52 I've now brought them down to two decimal places so that's where we're starting there 28752 and then we've just um, <coughs> in this and then these ones here um, it's just a matter of adding the correction across, so that's uh, a fairly simple calculation. Again, I'll just push F2 there, so it's just um, E6 plus the correction plus F6, which is there, and that's recorded in there, and I've made that bold, and you'll notice that you can check here 384.63, so we seem to have that fairly right. And then one further thing I've done is actually calculated the differences in height from the various stations. So there's a little bit of a check there, uh, 93.5, 18.45, 34.72, just a bit of a sanity, 15, 14.98, and 15237, 15242. So uh, they're there and they will be quite useful in future calculations. So uh, there you have it, that is the end of uh, another video, this particular video on uh, calculating your heights and there will be one more video or perhaps two depending on length as that will be regarding um, reducing the distances. I'd also remind you that you may want to put your uh, finalized heights into back into this uh, area here and complete the delta H mean so that may well be the mean heights that you put in there just to fin finalize that particular spreadsheet